Hi there, uh, welcome to Hoborek Bull Sessions, episode number 10. Uh, this week I'm gonna try to give you some tips and tricks about building your own studio gear. If you don't have tons of money, but a lot of spare time, and you are like me, um, a bit curious and like to take stuff apart <laughs> and maybe break some stuff when trying to fix them, I have a really good tip for you, and it's building your own studio gear. Uh, so today I will try to give you some pointers on where to start and uh, some tips and tricks and links to different web pages where you can find lots of information. I started building some of my own gear uh, a few years ago when I had more time than I do now. I wish I had more time now so I can build more stuff because it's really fun and um, gives me a lot of pleasure to, um, to know how the things are constructed and um, that means also that I kind of know how to fix stuff. What you need is a lot of time of course and uh, you also need um, a soldering iron and some really good soldering skills. If you haven't soldered much before, I would recommend you to start with maybe building some um, guitar pedals or stuff like that. It doesn't cost that much because the, the studio gear, even if it's a lot cheaper than uh, buying, it's still expensive. So if you want to start with the guitar pedals, that's what I did. And I bought a fuss, a fuss pedal, I think, from builderownclone.com. If you're in Sweden, I think they uh, they sell their stuff through a company called Moody Sounds. And it worked out fine, so that gave me confidence to keep on going. First serious project I built after that was a clone of the Neumann U87. I found uh, the PCB through a Canadian page, which is called uh, VintageMicrophonePCBKits.com. And there you can find a lot of different Neumann clones, like the U87, the u 60 Seven, the FET 47 and uh, a lot of different <laughs> Neumann microphones there. Uh, the next one after that, I built my own uh, 1176 compressor. I bought it from Hairball Audio. They have some really good kits from different uh, revisions of the compressor. I bought the Revision A, which is the one with the blue stripe. Um, they also have the black one called Revision D, and I think they also have Revision F or something like that. Other than the compressor, they also have some microphone preamps and stuff for the 500 series rack. Another page where you can find some really cool stuff is uh, DIYRecordingEquipment.com. They have their own kits, some uh, simple stuff like um, reamping boxes, uh, DI boxes, which is also a good place to start if you want to try to build some simpler stuff. Uh, it's not too expensive and uh, it's easy to build and it will definitely boost your confidence. On the DIYRecordingEquipment.com, they also have a sort of a database or um, what are you going to call it over a lot of different DIY projects. You can find a ton of stuff there and you can just click away through it and uh, find whatever you want. Another good company for buying some DIY stuff is the Serpent Audio. I bought two things from them that I built and one of them was the LA3A compressor and also the bus compressor, the SSL style. If you're buying stuff from the vintage microphone PCB kit.com, you have some capsules for the microphones. You can buy them from microphoneparts.com. On that page, they also have a lot of mods. If you have some cheap microphones uh, laying around, you can check out uh, microphoneparts.com and you probably will find uh, some instructions on how to make those microphones a ton better. And trust me, you can do a lot with just changing out the, the capsule in the microphone. It will be night and day. A little less than a year ago, I made my own uh, ribbon microphone that I called the uh, Hoborek Ribbon Microphone 1. I made about 25 of them and I think I sold 20, so I still have a few left. I got the inspiration from a page called DIYRibbonMic.com uh, where you can find some really killer instructions on how to make your own ribbon microphone from scratch. So what do you do when you start building all this stuff and uh, you find yourself like losing it and uh, you don't know how to finish it. Then you go to groupdiy.com, which is a really, really good community for, um, for DIY studio gear. People are making new projects there and you can find tons of cool stuff and also support for a lot of the DIY stuff you buy on other places on the internet. 
Aside from those uh, websites I told you about, there is a lot more, but those are the ones I have used personally and I have a really good experience. I think I will try to do a link compilation down here below so you can find a lot more stuff. But the ones I told you about here is the one I have used and I have, as I said, I have really good experience with them and uh, everything have worked out really, really good. So if you have any suggestions or uh, other stuff you think uh, that I should check out, please leave a message and uh, leave links and stuff like that because I'm, I'm still really curious to find out more stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and uh, see you in two weeks. Bye bye. Cheers.